And we must now move on to questions for the Minister for Regional Development, and I call Mr Jim Wells. Question number one, Mr Deputy Speaker. Mr Principal Deputy Speaker, uh, this legal action uh, related to a decision made by my predecessor, Conor Murphy, to remove an individual from the post of non-executive director of Northern Ireland Water in March 2010. The terms of the settlement were that the department would agree to pay the former director's reasonable legal costs and, other, and all other legal fees. So far, the total legal fees have not yet been finalised, as one final fee invoice remains outstanding, but I am able to confirm that the total costs to date are some 80,964.70 pence. This includes irrecoverable VAT on the claimant's legal costs. The final total legal costs are expected to be close to £90,000. My department is endeavouring to uh, uh, complete matters as, uh, as quickly as possible, and I have stated before uh, in response to the member, uh, uh, in response to written questions, that I will undertake uh, to write uh, to him uh, when the details of the final legal fees incurred in this case are available. Thank you. And I call Mr Wells for supplement. Would the Minister accept that that is a shocking figure of £80,000? And I accept that Mr Gormley was extremely poorly treated by his predecessor, Mr Conor Murphy. But when he came to office, he must have realised how shabbily treated Mr Gormley was, and he could have settled immediately, but he held on incurring further costs. Why did he not give the apology and pay his costs immediately he came to office? Well, I'm grateful to the uh, member for his supplementary question. Can I uh, say, in, in respect of the fees, I can assure uh, the member and indeed the House that the uh, fees were and uh, will, uh, have been and will continue to be closely scrutinised. Uh, the member will know that uh, I made uh, final decisions in respect of this case, and I took those decisions based, I believe, for the right reasons, at the right time, and in the public interest. I call Mr John Dallet. Mr Principal Deputy Speaker, I thank the Minister for his answer. And indeed, I'm sure Declan Gormley appreciates the fact that he's had his good name cleared of any wrongdoing. Could the minister suggest what the cost might have been had his predecessor, Conor Murphy, acted in the way he should have and agreed to the reasonable settlement which Declan Gormley asked for? Again, I'm grateful to the uh, member for his uh, supplementary question. And I have no doubt that uh, had my predecessor acted differently, uh, we would, uh, uh, I would not be dealing with this case, and the legal costs uh, may not uh, have arisen at all. But that is, uh, those matters were outside my control. Uh, I, uh, when I inherited uh, uh, this case, uh, took the time to look at it uh, objectively and fairly, came to my conclusions, uh, and did so very much in the public interest. I call Mr. Danny Kinahan. Thank you very much, Principal, Principal Deputy Speaker, and I apologise for give, probably giving the Minister a quick neck. Um, but would the Minister confirm that in settling this case, he and his department acted wholly in the public interest? I uh, absolutely uh, confer, uh, uh, confirm that uh, that, that is uh, indeed the case. Uh, I give se serious consideration uh, to all of the factors in this case. Um, and I concluded that it would not be in the public interest to incur significant further legal costs uh, um, when there was an opportunity to settle uh, the case on the basis of the terms outlined um, in the written statement. Uh, and I did indeed act in the public interest in deciding that this case should be settled. I call Mr Sammy Douglas. Sir Principal Deputy Speaker, question number two, please. Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, um, <clears throat> I have uh, outlined my ambition to give uh, increased focus and priority to the needs of cyclists and to encourage greater participation in this healthy and sustainable form of transport. And that's why I have uh, established a cycling unit in my department and asked that that unit, uh, as a priority, uh, bring forward a cycling strategy for Northern Ireland, uh, building on the active travel strategy. Um, I am keen to ensure that in the context of this cycling strategy, work will be undertaken to uh, increase the network of, of cycle and walking routes both in, in Belfast and across Northern Ireland. I have no doubt that the plans for the Conswater Community uh, Greenway will play a significant part in this network as it opens up the potential for more sustainable modes of transport such as walking and cycling. Um, and uh, I believe at the present time the opportunities are there. Uh, the member will know that we're hosting the start of Giro d'Italia 
in Northern Ireland later this year. And very much, I think, the time for cycling and walking and for sustainable travel options is with us now. Uh, I'm very excited that there are a number of proposals, including uh, the Community Greenway, uh, that could work very, very well and become uh, landmark projects, not only in Belfast, but indeed all over Northern Ireland. Thank you. Call Mr. Douglas for supplementary. Could I thank the Minister for his response? And I'm sure the Minister will be aware that the part of the scheme, the Knock River at Orangefield, was rerouted this morning. And I'm sure that there will be one rerouted that he would agree with. Um, could I ask the Minister, in terms um, of, uh, of a statement, that he would look at the linkages between schools and the Conswater Community Greenway cycle tracks because the Conswater Community Greenway would have something like 23 schools and colleges affiliated to them. Member for his um, supplementary question, uh, set aside the issue of rerouting uh, anything which I'm naturally cautious to, but anyway, um, uh, uh, I would uh, also recognise the work that, that he has done in respect of walking and cycling uh, in his own constituency. Uh, and I believe that uh, it is very important that walking and cycling infrastructure is properly integrated uh, into the existing infrastructure uh, and provides good connections to current facilities, uh, especially routes to school. And that's uh, one of the things that I've asked my new uh, cycling unit to look at, uh, and I expect that they will liaise with the relevant uh, stakeholders in the Conswater Greenway project. Thank you. And I call Mr Chris Little. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. I thank the Minister for his answers. Uh, can I ask him what uh, action he will be taking to integrate cycling into other sustainable forms of uh, transport and indeed our public transport network, given the positive news we have received today that passenger numbers in our trains have increased in the last year? I am grateful to the, uh, to, to the member for his supplementary uh, and indeed for his acknowledgement uh, of the success uh, of the uh, uh, public transport, both in terms of uh, rail and bus, and uh, very significant, very exciting uh, news that um, uh, uh, increased usage of uh, the rail network and indeed um, uh, the improved services to the bus network, both Metro uh, and all their services, are offering uh, a, a very viable alternative uh, for the use of public transport, uh, uh, particularly in, uh, in the Belfast area. Uh, I want to build on that in terms of uh, sustainable travel, in terms of cycling, uh, in terms of walking. Uh, I know the member as chair of the, of the all-party group on, on cycling, looking forward uh, to, to, to uh, uh, liaising uh, and working with them. Uh, I hope that the member um, uh, doesn't uh, endure as many punctures as I uh, understand he's been recently um, uh, 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 had to endure, but um, uh, I very much hope and see the cycling unit uh, as being able to uh, identify opportunities to improve the infrastructure in terms of cycling and indeed walking um, as we move forward, as we plan future schemes and as we uh, seek to improve the existing network. Thank you. And I call Mr. Sean Lynch. Minister, in comparison to other regions uh, in relation to cycle lanes, how much has been delivered across the north of Ireland? Well, the, uh, can I say, obviously, the, the, uh, uh, the cycling unit has only been uh, uh, created, um, and of course, we are uh, keen to see, to identify uh, a programme of work for that, and I know that the cycling unit will want to. Um, uh, meet with uh, the, the committee uh, of regional development of which he is uh, deputy chairman. Um, but let me also say that before the end of this uh, financial year, road service plans to provide the following um, 180 metres of contraflow cycle lane in Bridge Street, Lisburn, over 170 cycle hoop uh, type stands at various locations across the greater Belfast area, and procure almost £30,000 of traditional cycle, Sheffield-type uh, cycle stands. So this is ongoing work. There are many, many aspects to it, many facets, uh, and I hope uh, and I know it will have the support not only of the member, not only of the Regional Development Committee, but in uh, the entire House. Thank you. And I call Mr David Michael Bean. Question number three, Deputy Speaker. 
Uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, my department has robust process, uh, processes in place to manage parking fines. Uh, when a penalty charge uh, notice is issued, a driver has a choice to either pay the fine or challenge it. PCNs can be paid over the phone, online or by post. Details on how to pay a PCN are displayed on the rear of the ticket and uh, online on the Northern Ireland Direct website. Uh, the Parking Enforcement Processing Unit um, based in OMA and Coleraine has 37 staff members and manages both payments and challenges. If a driver believes that they were issued with a PCN incorrectly, they may challenge it by writing to road service. Uh, details of how to do so are again provided on the reverse of the ticket and online. Uh, staff in uh, the Parking Enforcement Processing Unit will consider the challenge in line uh, with the Parking Enforcement Protocol, which I published uh, in October 2012. The appellant will be informed in writing of the results and the next steps uh, available. Ultimately, uh, the driver has the right uh, to submit an appeal to the Northern Ireland Traffic Penalty Tribunal, which is managed by the Department of Justice. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I do thank the Minister for his answer. I wonder, could the Minister um, indicate to us today as to what he's planning to do with the dichotomy which currently exists between users of his department's DRD um, charging points for electric cars, um, which in some areas and some drivers have been faced with the issue where they have been fined for parking for more than one hour, even though it takes, in some cases, at least eight hours to charge an electric car? Grateful to the member for his uh, uh, supplementary uh, question. Uh, I, I am aware of the um, example that, uh, that he raises, um, and I have asked uh, officials to investigate that uh, and to see how uh, improvements can be made to that service and the full understanding of it to the general public, particularly those who avail of um, the, the charging uh, network that we have. Uh, I'm going to go to and I thank the Minister for his answer. Uh, could I ask the Minister, has he identified any regional disparities in the management system across the North? I thank the Member for his uh, supplementary uh, uh, question. Um, I think that what I, I am encouraged that um, since uh, I, I came to office, uh, we have seen uh, a reduction in penalty charge notices. Uh, and I welcome that. Uh, uh, we had something um, uh, in 2011, the figures were something like 125,000. Uh, they were reduced then to 2012 um, uh, to 112, and now in 2013 to 108,000. So it shows a decline, um, and uh, that is very much um, uh, good news. Uh, I think most people will welcome that and will confirm that. Um, these uh, charges and these penalty notices are not uh, put in place simply to raise finance for the department because, frankly, uh, it is not uh, the management of parking uh, and all the associated costs uh, still uh, had a cost to my department this year of over £3 million. Pounds. So, and that is money not just to, uh, as a cost to the department but indeed to the taxpayer. Uh, I call Mr. Colum Eastwood. Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, and can I thank the Minister for his answers thus far? Can I ask him what efforts his department is making uh, to stop the, the misuse of the very limited number of disabled parking bays that we have uh, across the north? Grateful to the, uh, to the member uh, for his uh, supplementary question, and of course, um, uh, unfortunately, there, there are a small no, a number of people who, who, who to continue to um, abuse the situation uh, in respect of parking and indeed uh, blue badge holders and, and uh, prevent genuine users uh, from, from using uh, the available spaces. We will uh, continue uh, to, to bear down uh, as far as we can uh, on, on, on those people who are irresponsible and who um, uh, are, are not uh, carrying out any kind of um, good neighbourliness uh, attitudes uh, uh, to, to people. Uh, I think it's very selfish, I think it's very wrong, uh, and I think where there are instances that we can take action against individuals who flagrantly uh, break the rules of parking, then I think uh, most people will, will see that as, as uh, justified. I call Mr Leslie Cree. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. The Minister has touched on my question, but I wonder if you could provide details of the calendar year figures for last year in full 
perhaps including any money raised, if he knows where that's gone. Well, I'm, I'm grateful indeed to, uh, to the member. As, as I've indicated, um, parking, they, they were down to um, 108,000. Uh, 558 penalty charge notices were raised, um, uh, and that represented um, a reduction of some, uh, what, some 4 per um, cent. And of course, uh, the, the, our, our figures, I think, uh, are encouraging. There's no reason to be complacent, uh, and indeed we're not. And of course, um, common sense uh, for those who park, common sense for those who have to apply the penalty notices. Uh, are an important feature, and I know that the member will agree with me that uh, the application of common sense uh, would go a long way to helping everyone. I call Ms. Karen McEvitt. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Question four. Uh, can I thank the member for her question? Uh, to avoid any uh, misunderstanding on the part of the member, it might be helpful if I clarify comments that I made to the House on Monday, the 13th of January 2014, during my statement regarding the meeting of the North South Ministerial Council. Uh, my comments were in response to the grilling actions carried out by my department's road service on the evening of the 12th of January and the morning of the 13th of January 2013, when I informed the House that I had asked for a full review of the grilling actions of road service during this period. This is essentially uh, an internal review by um, uh, senior officials of, uh, of information received from the Met Office and made available to decision makers, as well as a review of the decisions themselves and as such. Um, it will not include uh, a, a public uh, consultation. Um, I have met with my Permanent Secretary to consider the report and the recommendations contained within it, together with the development of an action plan for implementing these. It is important that there is not only transparency in decisions taken, but confidence in future decisions. I can make my position very clear. Uh, this is an issue of public safety and not resources. And where there is any doubt in any decision to grit or not to grit, I expect decision makers to err on the side of caution and, when in doubt, grit. Um, I did not, however, uh, ask for a full review of road services, uh, winter services uh, activities. At my request, an independent review was carried out by the National Winter Service Research Group following the severe weather in January and March of last year. The report of this review, which was published in October 2013, was a comprehensive examination of every aspect of the winter service programme, and I am encouraged that the independent review was generally positive and praised the experience and professionalism of DRD staff. Uh, in addition, the review concluded that our winter service policies are well considered and consistent. I call Ms. Karen McEvitt for a supplement. Thank you, Mr. Principal, uh, Deputy Speaker. And given the unfortunate rise in the road fatalities this year, I welcome the announcement this month by the Minister uh, to review decisions over the road get, uh, gritting and acknowledge the Minister's common sense um, approach that it is an issue of public safety and not resources. Can I ask the Minister if he has any discussions with the Minister of the Environment to see how the two departments can work together to help reduce the number of fatalities on our roads? Grateful to the uh, member for her supplementary question and indeed um, join with her in. Uh, um, extending my sincere condolences to all those impacted and, and affected by uh, road deaths um, in the early part of this year so far. And, uh, these are real tragedies for families to, um, to have to come to terms with, uh, and um, it must be enormously difficult. And our, the, the sympathy of the entire House, uh, I know, will be extended. Um, the member will know that uh, uh, her party colleague, the Minister for the Environment, Minister Durkin, uh, and I, and indeed uh, other ministers, including the Minister of Justice, uh, meet on a, on a regular basis uh, to uh, discuss um, road safety uh, uh, issues. Um, we will continue uh, to do that, and uh, very much uh, we uh, will continue to work together, and our respective departments and agencies will work together. Uh, seeking to um, improve uh, safety as best we possibly can. And uh, I think that's incumbent uh, on, on all of us, and it's also incumbent on, on us all to encourage uh, people when, when using the roads in any shape or capacity or using any form uh, to, uh, uh, to proceed uh, with the utmost care uh, at all times. Jimmy Splatt. 
Thank you, uh, Principal Deputy Speaker. And can I thank the Minister for his answer so far? And can I thank the Minister in terms of the uh, review that he directed on the 12th and 13th uh, in relation to one Pacific incident and put on record uh, the thanks of uh, the committee uh, for the, work, the hard work of the DRD staff in relation to the winter programme. But can I ask the Minister in relation to the uh, uh, report which he indicated he had discussed with the Permanent Secretary, will he discuss that report at the earliest opportunity with the DRD committee? I'm grateful to the, uh, to the member for his uh, supplementary question uh, and indeed for his comments, uh, particularly to uh, road service and the associated uh, agencies in, in the important work that they carry out um, from uh, um, October right through to April in terms of uh, uh, winter services. And sometimes uh, that work um, uh, is easy to overlook, uh, but uh, I, I don't take that work at all for granted, and I acknowledge and want to thank and encourage uh, all of the staff uh, involved in that. Uh, um, I'm happy to indicate to, to the member that uh, it is my intention to uh, make uh, a copy of this report uh, available to the Assembly Library for members' full consideration, and I hope that that will uh, give him uh, some reassurance uh, as to the um, importance that we, that we uh, take these issues very, very seriously. I call Ms. Rosalie McCorley. Free last come call your school boys. Leshanaira Sukhdar Agri. I th um, thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for his answers. Can the Minister tell us has anything been learned from the March storms of last year? Grateful to the, uh, to the member uh, for her supplementary question. Uh, the member uh, will uh, have heard me in my initial answer uh, to uh, uh, the member for South Down, uh, Mrs. McKevitt. Uh, refer to the independent review that was uh, undertaken by the National Winter uh, Service Research Group. Um, that was uh, an independent um, uh, um, report. Uh, it was a comprehensive uh, examination, and uh, as I've indicated, uh, the review was generally positive. There were 14 recommendations arising out of it. So uh, we have carried those forward, and we are seeking to implement those recommendations uh, as quickly and as speedily as possible. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. Uh, would the Minister outline the procedures that exist and issues that determine uh, whether or not gritting is initiated in any particular evening in order that road safety is protected as best as possible and the economy continues to operate? Grateful to the member for his uh, supplementary question. And, and, and he does indeed raise an important uh, issue, which I think is worthy of, of some uh, serious consideration and reflection by all members of the House. Decision makers uh, receive information uh, from a number of sources uh, before taking um, a decision to embark on a salting exercise. Um, they will receive uh, direct, localised and ongoing information from, from the Met Office uh, on matters such as temperature and dampness. And um, it is important to bear in mind that even when temperatures are low, the potential for the formation of ice is dependent uh, on whether or not we have dry conditions. Um, Fixed temperature gauges are, are present in a number of roads across Northern Ireland. Uh, they're used to assist the assessment uh, of the wet forecast, and staff are deployed on the ground to report back to decision makers in terms of dampness and readings from further temperature probes. Um, this um, information is regularly uh, then reported back to the Met Office directly for further consideration. Um, decisions are then taken on the basis of all of the evidence available and on the most up-to-date information and Met Office assessments. Um, for me, uh, I think the importance uh, of the review undertaken uh, is what occurs when, when conditions rapidly depart from forecasts um, after a decision has been made, uh, and I am moving forward with reforms to strengthen uh, this element of the decision-making process. I call Mr. Robin Swan. Question number five, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, the Tax Smart, tax smart scheme currently uh, only applies to bus travel due to Her Majesty's revenue and customs uh, determination on the matter. Uh, this enables individuals to purchase an annual bus travel card through an employer salary uh, sacrifice scheme uh, subject to certain conditions as laid down by HMRC. The Northern Ireland Civil Service has signed up to the scheme 
but it is also open to any employer. I understand that the Republic of Ireland uh, operates such a tax incentive scheme uh, covering both bus and rail travel, and I am keen to explore the opportunity to extend the scheme here to uh, rail users. Um, I believe a case can be made uh, that extending it to rail users in Northern Ireland is justified in terms of our circumstances. However, the member will be aware that tax schemes are a reserved matter and can only be amended by Westminster. HMRC seem to take the view that currently there is not a general tax uh, exemption across all uh, uh, forms of public transport because the cost of providing a general tax uh, exemption would be very significant. I am doubtful uh, if HMRC have considered the particular circumstances of Northern Ireland uh, in this regard. I believe strongly that there is a case for helping rail users by introducing this incentive and someone travelling from Ballymena to Belfast on an annual rail ticket would, could benefit by nearly £350 a year. And for a fellow from North Antrim, his eyes nearly popped out. Um, a real incentive, therefore, in savings uh, in these difficult uh, economic times. I have therefore written to the Minister for Finance and Personnel to seek his engagement to engage directly with the Treasury, uh, and I am currently waiting his response. Call Mr. Swan for a supplementary. Thank you very much, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for his answer. Will he reassure rail passengers that not only has he improved services and frozen fares, but that he will continue to press the Finance Minister on this issue, which could bring about a fair reduction for the many regular users of our train services? Grateful to the uh, member for his uh, supplementary question. And yes, uh, I uh, share his enthusiasm. I think. Um, the, uh, the figures that um, have been uh, uh, gone into the public domain in terms of increased uh, rail use, uh, usage um, confirm um, how popular rail travel is now, uh, increasingly uh, an option for uh, a great many uh, uh, people using it. I think the, 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 uh, the new trains that have been brought online are part of that. I think the, uh, the better services that we provided, including Wi-Fi, uh, and uh, associated comforts uh, benefit that. So I think, um, uh, as well as the improvements that we've been making to uh, railway stations, including uh, Antrim and uh, indeed Portadown, uh, all of that combines for very positive news. Uh, I think we can continue to build that if we can convince the HMRC uh, that the Tax Smart scheme should and could apply to Northern Ireland. Uh, and I very much hope that uh, the um, uh, Finance Minister will give me uh, the green light uh, to positively pursue these issues with the HMRC so that we can further benefit rail users throughout Northern Ireland. Mr Ian McRae. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. The, the Minister will be more than aware that the people of Mid-Ulster are, are standing for a long time waiting for their train to arrive. And I'm sure it'll be um, as long yet. Um, but given the, the fact that you know, the minister, and I certainly welcome what the minister ha is bringing forward, what consideration has he given to ensure that those people who live in rural Northern Ireland are not um, treated um, unequally in, in respect of this? And, and are there any other schemes that he can bring forward to try and um, help those people? Grateful to the, uh, to the member for his uh, supplementary question. And, and indeed, um, uh, I uh, have no difficulty in saying that, uh, that I would like to see uh, the further development uh, of rail services uh, to uh, other parts uh, of Northern Ireland, including, I have to say, uh, in, my, in my own constituency in the area between Portadown and Armagh, uh, where there is now a significant lobby of support for that. Uh, and uh, in, in a recent public consultation uh, for uh, railways going into the future, leading into the future, um, I think there is, there is public support for that. Of course, it will be down to uh, very much uh, the financial uh, situation that we find ourselves in, and I'm uh, very happy to work with the member and, and, and go jointly with the, with the finance minister and other executive colleagues uh, to, to see can we get further uh, expenditure for uh, public transport particularly uh, and extending the rail network. And, and there is a very real uh, issue indeed that uh, people in the rural community, and I represent uh, a mostly uh, rural constituency, and I understand uh, the, the problems of travel uh, to and fro. So uh, I'm very supportive of, of measures, but 
Largely, um, uh, there is no uh, ceiling on the ambition that I have for the extension uh, of public transport in Northern Ireland, both rural and urban. Order, and that ends the period for oral questions, and we will now move on to topical questions. And I call Mr. Fran McCann. Uh, as the Minister is aware, uh, uh, throughout the inner city Belfast every morning, uh, communities are invaded by hundreds of illegal parkers. And, uh, did you pick up the, the, the start of it? Did you pick up the start of the question? Uh, so every morning in inner city Belfast, communities are invaded by hundreds of illegal parkers uh, that make lives of misery for their residents and place the lives of their children in danger. Uh, can the Minister say what, it, what can be done uh, to assist these uh, residents live a normal life? Well, I'm grateful to, uh, to, uh, to the member um, for uh, the question, and, and indeed he has raised this uh, uh, with me uh, recently and, uh, and also in the past. And uh, I, I, I think perhaps, um, I think to be fair, um, a lot of the parking has been inconsiderate, perhaps more than illegal, uh, because obviously there are remedies to uh, illegal parking, and uh, we, we touched on those earlier in terms of um, uh, penalty charge notices or enforcement procedures. Um, I am uh, keen, uh, the member will know and the, uh, members of the House will know, uh, of the, the residence parking schemes that we've been trying to uh, negotiate with local communities and, and bring them uh, into being in areas of Belfast. I'm happy to continue to work with that. So far, all our efforts have, have as yet been unsuccessful, but that is not a reason. Uh, to, to stop trying to, to achieve and to give easement uh, to uh, communities in areas where they feel strongly about these, about these matters. Mr McCann for supplementary. Chair, sure, and uh, thank, you the minister, thank the Minister for, for his answer. But if, if you went out into the likes of Hamill Street and John Street, uh, where uh, people park five abreast on a street that stops ambulances getting through, uh, the people who are ill that, 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 that take them to the hospital. That makes it difficult for parents to get to schools with their children. There is a serious problem, and I know that as pre your predecessor uh, uh, was at a very advanced stage of uh, residence parking schemes, certainly in that community, and they were talking about a pilot scheme. Now, there was some teething problems. Uh, could the minister say that can be dusted down and that community used as a pilot scheme uh, to see how, uh, what way they work? Grateful to the member. Uh, I mean, I can assure the member that uh, rather than simply dust it down, that, in my view, is ongoing work, uh, and officials uh, will be seeking to uh, to make progress on that. Uh, progress ha uh, has unfortunately been uh, been slow on uh, resident parking schemes for a variety of reasons. Uh, there were issues uh, of of affordability and how much permits. Uh, uh, that that issue uh, was overcome. Um, but there are the practical uh, issues of uh, because to every action there is a reaction, and, and, and by creating um, an area of residence parking, uh, we have to consider the impacts that that will have in neighbouring streets uh, as well. So some of these have been features uh, of the uh, of the difficulties that have been presented to us. Uh, but I, I can assure the member, and will assure the member, that uh, that, we, that I will uh, pursue. Uh, the issue of the area uh, which is indicated uh, and um, uh, hopefully we can make progress as quickly as we can. Thank you. And I call Mr Chris Little. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. <clears throat> the Minister, to his credit, has recently invested in building bridges to connect people and places, but can I ask him what impact he thinks the illegal and disrespectful display of flags on Department for Regional Development property has on community relations and what action he has taken to address this manifestation of sectarianism in our streets. I'm grateful to the um, member for his uh, supplementary question and indeed um, the uh, potential bridge, build, bridge building he refers to is of course the Ormo uh, bridge for a pedestrian and, and, and cycling bridge which has I think enormous potential in linking uh, and literally a bridge building between uh, South Belfast and East Belfast uh, and I very much hope that people uh, will take uh, an active interest in that, uh, will engage in the public consultation uh, and, uh, and I hope that we can bring that forward as, uh, as a project. Um, in terms of the issue that he raises, uh, he will know because he was part of it, uh, the, the lengthy discussions uh, in terms of Haas, Richard Haas and uh, Megan O'Sullivan. 
uh, and, and, and the issues uh, that were part of that. And, and um, whilst I, I acknowledge that there are, uh, there, there are, you know, those issues are not yet resolved, I also have to say that there are uh, various illegal monuments uh, all, uh, all in certain places across Northern Ireland that cause me huge offence, uh, and I would prefer that they were not there. Um, but in, in, in the context of um, uh, my departmental staff and asking them to either remove uh, any of those uh, um, without being assured of their, of their personal safety, uh, we are still in that situation. And, uh, difficult though it is, uh, we will have to continue to work through and resolve the issues. Um, but I'm not sure that they are um, easily solved by easy sound bites or indeed uh, quick questions. Mr Little for supplementary. Thank you Minister for his response. Um, would the Minister agree however in principle at least that some form of regulatory approach uh, that includes his department and other agencies that are necessary to provide the relevant security uh, that facilitates open, transparent, time-bound and respectful display of flags and emblems is urgently needed and that he has a, a leadership role on this issue? Grateful to the, to the member uh, for his um, supplementary question and, and, and I think I've acknowledged that through the Haas discussions um, uh, th that is considered to be the best uh, avenue at present of making progress um, uh, on these issues. They will be challenging uh, and of course uh, I, whilst I have departmental interest as indeed other departments have I have also political interest, and, uh, uh, as indeed the member has. So uh, we will seek to, uh, to make progress um, uh, and, and move forward uh, as best and as easily and as sensibly as we possibly can. I call Ms. Karen McKevitt. Thank you, Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker. Um, can I ask the Minister for his evaluation on the effectiveness um, of the multi agency group set up uh, to deal with the flooding during uh, the recent storms along coastal routes? Well, I'm grateful to the member for um, uh, her question, and indeed, um, uh, Road Service was part uh, of a multi-agency team, uh, which coordinated the uh, inter-agency response during the recent storms. Um, and indeed, Road Service were present in the, in the local Silver Command in the Nuri and Mourne area at Ardmore uh, PSNI base uh, throughout the event. Um, I had uh, taken the opportunity to uh, keep in contact and attend on some occasions the Gold Command uh, the, uh, um, under the chairmanship of, of SEC uh, uh, Stephen Martin. Uh, I must say I think uh, in general terms the work of uh, the Gold and Silver Commands throughout Northern Ireland uh, made an important contribution uh, to um, dealing with what could, be, could have been very uh, catastrophic um, uh, uh, conditions um, and uh, uh, I was pleased at the, to see at first hand the working between the government agencies and the emergency services that extended to the New and Mourne area and to other areas I know. Can I say that road service uh, provided and delivered approximately three and a half thousand sandbags and uh, to various uh, locations within that New and Mourne uh, area and uh, staff and contractors, road services, uh, other agencies worked throughout the event uh, and responded to a large number of uh, flooding calls um, uh, through that period. Uh, and of course, uh, we will um, not take things for granted. Uh, we will continue uh, to look at uh, lessons that we can learn. And I know that a debrief for the local Silver Command is due to take place on Friday, the 30th of January, uh, followed by a structured debrief and a workshop to follow on the event uh, on the 24th of February. Karen Kevitt for supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to recognise uh, the great work carried out by the Silver Command unit operating in the Neary and Moore, particularly for South Down. We did get a Quar Bathern um, along the coast all over the Christmas period, and there were more than good to every one of the elected representatives and indeed the public um, that were there to help as well. Uh, can I ask the Minister what assessments have been carried out um, on, the ra on the real risk to flood plains and what preventative measures are taking place to protect these areas? Well, I'm grateful to, uh, to the member uh, for her supplementary question and indeed uh, uh, her, her, her comments. And, <clears throat> uh, and of course the member will know that um, in terms of um, a, a lot of the flood management uh, issues are dealt with 
by Rivers Agency. And of course, that is uh, under the auspices of uh, uh, Minister O'Neill uh, in Dard. Um, however, I can say there has been good uh, cooperation and collaboration between uh, the various agencies. The member will know that there was uh, a PEDU report uh, commissioned following um, uh, storms um, within the last uh, couple of years. Uh, and that concluded that um, it might be better that uh, all of those agencies uh, would feature um, in one single uh, department so that responses could be better coordinated. Um, uh, that uh, remains uh, an outstanding issue uh, and uh, is not resolved. But uh, I am very satisfied, certainly in the current uh, circumstances, that uh, uh, significant cooperation and collaboration uh, between all the agencies, uh, road service, rivers <coughs> agency, water service, uh, NIE, uh, PSNI, emergency services, uh, ambulance, etc., and health provision, and um, uh, all of the other uh, agencies worked together very, very well, and I uh, uh, appreciate all of those things. I call Mr. Pat Ramsey. I thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. Like you and me, we both live in the city that are grieving and saddened by a young man, Andrew Quigley, who has been missing after going on to the River Foyle, jumping off Foyle Bridge for almost two weeks, and the despair and heartache showed by his mother, Colette Quigley. But could I ask the Minister, would, has the Minister had any discussions with the Public Health Agency in terms of the installation of preventative or safety measures that could deter or curtail because there, high, there is a high level of loss of life in the city because of this, to prevent that. I'm grateful to the member for uh, his uh, supplementary question, and, and indeed I was um, uh, very moved last night at the uh, interviews given by uh, Mrs Quigley, um, and the, the worry and the concern uh, and the obvious uh, uh, trauma that present circumstances um, within that family uh, are, are causing. Uh, and I would offer, I want to offer my uh, prayers and good wishes uh, at, at this very difficult time for that, uh, for that lady and for that family uh, and for their friends and associates. Um, uh, I hear the point that the, that the member uh, uh, makes uh, uh, and I will re uh, reflect on it. Um, and if he wishes to uh, write to me directly, uh, setting out a number of um, perhaps uh, initiatives, then I'd be pleased to respond. Ramsey, for a supplementary. Yep. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. And I welcome the Minister's statement, and I'm sure the family will take great comfort f from your words as well. And we all hope that soon they will have the return of, of Andrew, the son, to, to enable some type of burial. Uh, further, Ted, could I ask the Minister, in light of his cooperation and support for some type of initiative, would he be minded then to, to hold a meeting with Foyle Search and Rescue, one of the leading emergency services that help prevent the loss of life, and myself to discuss some initiatives, small measures that might be helpful, that in the long term could save someone's life? Grateful to the, uh, to the member and, and understand entirely uh, the sentiments uh, and his desire to see um, uh, progress made on all of these issues. Uh, I am happy to engage in, in a multi-agency approach uh, and, and clearly there, are, uh, there may be even more significant players in, in terms of departments or agencies uh, than my responsibilities, but we are happy to, to look and examine uh, issues where we can make progress. Thank you. And I call Mr. Pat Sheehan. I've got a free last count, Corla. Uh, the Minister will be aware of a pilot initiative uh, that is underway in the Braniel area in, in uh, Belfast, where audiovisual aids have been placed on buses and at bus stops. I wonder if the Minister could tell us when that initiative, if or when that initiative might be rolled out to other areas. I'm grateful to the member for uh, his uh, question and indeed uh, his interest. Uh, in this matter, uh, I am aware of the, of the pilot scheme that he mentions. Um, I, he, he, will, he may also be aware that we have uh, submitted a bid uh, to uh, FMDFM for, uh, for funding um, an audiovisual uh, programme that will further extend uh, the opportunities. Uh, we see it very much I, uh, I, I, as a positive um, uh, outcome or, or has the potential 
to make a positive uh, difference for those uh, who, who's, um, uh, who suffer from audio and um, uh, 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 problems. Um, I would uh, say that uh, that, that uh, I, I recently met with with a group of, of users. Uh, we discussed uh, in, at some length and in some detail uh, the problems that they experience. I have a huge uh, sympathy for uh, some of the circumstances that they find themselves in, and huge admiration uh, for the way that they seek to overcome uh, the difficulties. But I think uh, it is an issue that I'd like to see further progress. Order. Time is up. And that concludes question time.